Okay, here we go, Math 6, Unit 8, Lesson 16. Going to explore some block, box plots today to summarize distributions. So here are the birth weights and ounces of puppies born in the kennel. And what they want you to take a look at here is look at all these things and what do you notice and what do you wonder about the distribution of the puppy weights. A couple things that you might notice is that the range goes from 13 to 20. So there's about a 7 pound difference between the smallest puppy and the largest puppy. We can tell looking at the data set here that, you know, basically you're looking at somewhere in the middle about the median. Looks like it's probably about 17. If you had to take a guess there, that's 10, 20, uh, and then 26, 27. So we're going to go and split that up a little bit, uh, about 14, right? So right about here is somewhere about the median, about there. The mean probably isn't much different. The mean is probably also maybe about 17 because just the values aren't too far from that center point there. We also see that there are no gaps in the data. It goes all the way from 13 to 20 with no gaps there. And basically the numbers are fairly close together. There's a spread of seven, but the numbers are pretty close to one another. So it's interesting. In activity two, is called the human box plot. For this thing, your teacher's gonna give you the data on the lengths of names of students in your class. You're going to write the five number summary by finding the data sets minimum, quartile one, two, three, and the maximum. Okay, so you're going to take that data and you're going to figure that out based upon what your teacher gives you for the lengths of names. I don't have that today, so I'm going to let you do that in class. And then if you have time, hopefully, you're going to be able to create a human box plot with these values to see what we're going to be talking about on the next page. Okay, so on the next page here. Here we go, now for the paper part. Studying blinks. It says 20 people participated in a study about blinking. The number of times each person blinked while watching a video for one minute was recorded, and the data values are seen here, ordered from smallest to largest. I like it when they keep them in order. It does help out a lot. We're gonna use this grid to make a dot plot of the data set, okay? So this gets a little tiny here, but we'll do our best. So each line represents a, a value. So we have one at three, so one, two, three. We have one at six. We have one at eight. We have two at 11. So one, two. We have one at 13. We have four at 14, two, three, and four. We have one at 16, one at 18. We have one, two, three at 20, one at 22, one at 24, one at 32, one at 36, and one over here at 51. So there's our dot plot, I'm taking this data here and making on the dot plot there. And what they want us to do is to first of all, find the median and mark its location. Now there are 20 here, so we're gonna find the, ba the basically the place between numbers 10 and 11, data points 10 and 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and there's eleven. So our quartile two is right here at fifteen. That's where that one's located at, right there. So quartile one is going to be between the ten. So I'm going to go out five. One, two, three, four, five, and five. So it comes in between these guys right there. There's quartile one, which is located at that's ten, eleven, located at twelve. Is that right? Yeah, 12. Hmm. Yep, 12. And over here we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to go in between those guys right there. There's quartile 3, which is at 21. So we have the value of quartile 1 is at 12, quartile 2 is 15, quartile 3 is 21. The minimum value is here at 3, and the maximum value is up here at 51. Now a box plot, is what we're talking about here, can be used to represent the five number summary graphically. Let's draw a box plot for the number of blinks. So first, draw a box that extends from the first quartile to the third quartile. So our first quartile is here at quartile one, which is right there, so put a dot right there for now. And quartile three is here at 21. So we're gonna draw a box that extends from there to there, from 12 to 21. And it doesn't matter how tall your box is, but we want to make sure it's the right length. So this is where quartile 1 is, and this is where quartile 3 is in a box plot. Next, at the median, Q2, draw a vertical line. So our median's here at 15, so we're going to draw a vertical line right there, and that is where Q2 
2 is at. And then from the left side of the box, we're going to draw a horizontal line, a whisker, that extends to the minimum. So our minimum is right here at 3. So we're going to draw a little whisker that extends all the way out to 3. And then we'll draw a whisker over here that extends out to 51. Like so. So you start with your quartile 1 and quartile 3. You draw the box. Draw a line for the median at quartile 2. Then add a whisker to show the minimum value and a whisker to show the maximum value. And that is all you have to do to create a box plot. That's all there is to it. But you're using those five number summaries and putting it in a kind of a graphic form. And that's the idea. So the next question asks, using that then, okay, what fraction of the data are represented by each of these elements? So the left whisker. Well, the way a box plot works, remember, is, or the quartiles work, is this is one-fourth of all the data is here. This is one-fourth of all the data. And in this range, quartile one to three, is one-half of all the data. Okay, and you can see that being the case. There are ten data points in here, five and five. So the left whisker is one-fourth, the box is a half, and the right is also one-fourth. Okay, now you can suppose there were some errors in the data set, and the smallest value should have been 6 instead of 3, and the largest value should have been 41. So again, think back to our plot here we just had. If I have to change the data set, and that should be 6 instead of 3, what am I changing? Well, I'm going to change my whisker a little bit, right? I'll make it a little bit like that. If it wasn't quite out to 51, it was 41, then I'm going to bring my whisker in like this. Okay, so 51 to 41. From 3 to 6. These quartiles here, nothing changed, did it? Okay, so the minimum, is it gonna, am I going to change that? Yes. First quartile? No. Median? No. Third? No. Maximum? Yes. So if I change those two endpoints like that, nothing else changes about the docs plot, dot plot except the endpoints. Okay, and really, that is about all there is for that. <laughs> okay. So the docs box plot represents the five number summary of a data set. That's all that it is. It's a way of showing visually the five number summary. It's a way of taking the dots that might be here and making it into a docs dot plot idea. But you could definitely read a dot plot because simply you know where the minimum is, the maximum is, and of course you can tell where the median is quite simply enough. And you know that the numbers in that box represent 50% of all the data points in your uh, dot plot. Okay, I'm going to pause there, let you work on homework, come back and check it again in just a second. Alright, homework time. Each student in class recorded how many books they read during the summer. Here's a box plot that summarizes the data. Okay, so we have a minimum here. We know we have quartile 1, quartile 2, quartile 3, and a maximum there. Okay, so the meat, so let's see. What is the greatest number of books? The greatest number of books is here at the maximum. That's going to be right there at 15. The median is based upon this line right there, which is at point number 6. And the interquartile range, recall that, that is Q3 minus Q1. So quartile 3 is here at 10. Quartile 1 is here at 5. So 10 minus 5 is 5. Okay? And remember, this talks about the spread or the variation based upon a median. That's what that one is from previous lessons. Okay, use this five number summary to draw a box plot. Okay, we have 40 to 60. That tells me how long this needs to be. So I'm going to put a 40 right here and count by two. So 42, 4, 6, 8, 50, 2, 4, 6, 8, 60. Okay, so my median, I'll start there, is at 48. I'm going to just put a line there. My first quartile is 45, so 42, 44, so 45 is going to be here. Third quartile is at 50, so that's here. So my box is going to be from quartile 1, quartile 3, and there's the median right there. We know the minimum is a 40, so whisker to 40. And the maximum is out here at 60, so whisker to 60. And that's all there is to it. Number three, the table shows the number of hours per week that each of 13 seventh graders spent doing homework. Create a box plot. 
Well, the first thing I want to do is put these numbers in order. So I'm going to rewrite them. I'm going to do 3, and I have a 4. I have 1, 2, 3, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 5. I have a 7. I have a 9. I have a 10. And I have 1, 2, 3, 11s. 1, 2, 3, 11s. And 2, 12s. There are 13 kids, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That becomes my middle, right? That becomes quartile 2. I come back here in the middle of these values. It's going to be right here, right? This becomes quartile 1 and 1, 2, 3. This becomes quartile two, uh, 3. And that becomes my minimum and my maximum. So now to draw this box plot here, we're going to go from 3 to 12. So we draw a line. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, oops, 10, 11, sorry, and 12. And I will draw a box from 5 to 11. So 5 to 11. There's my box from 5 to 11. Put the median in at 9. There's that one. And then we extend that out to 12. Extend that out to 3. Oops. And that's my box plot going from 3 to 12, just like so. The next question says a box plot displays one uh, the add-on response times of 100 mice. How many mice are represented by the rectangle from 0.5 to 1 second? Okay, so where is 0.5 to 1 second? So 0.5 to 1 is from here to here. So how many mice are represented by that box right there? Remember how quartile works again? This is a fourth, this is a half, and this is a fourth. And if there were 100 mice, what is half of 100? You would say 50 mice. Okay, and the next one, here's a dot plot, represents the data set. Explain why the mean of the data is greater than the median. So why would the mean be greater than the median in this picture? All right, you have 10 values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which means our median is about 3, and the mean is larger. The reason it's larger is because we can see the data is spread out, right? The mean is going to be larger because there is, um, there's a lot of variance or variability in our data set, which is going to make the mean larger. These values here are going to increase the mean, where the median is also measure of center. It's going to stay about the same. The last question here, just one you can work on, it says Jada earns money from babysitting walking her neighbor's dogs and running errands for her aunt. Every four weeks she combines her earnings and divides them into three equal parts. One for spending, one for saving, one for donating to charity. She donated $26 of her earning for the past four weeks of charity. So how much could she have earned from each job? And then make two lists of how much she could have earned from three jobs during the past four weeks. So basically what we're doing here is this. She gave $26 away. She takes whatever she, money she makes. She makes some money, right? And she's going to divide that into three parts. Spending, saving, and charity. Okay? So we know that she gave $26 away already to charity, which means she also gave 26 to savings and 26 there because it was divided evenly. So if you took 26 and multiplied it by 3, you'd find that she made $78.00 over four weeks. That's what she made. So if you wanted to find out how much she made each week, if it was the same each week, you could divide that out. And you could say four goes in there one time, four goes into 38 nine times, you have two left over, bring down a zero, goes in there five times for 20. So basically you could say, well, she makes about $19.50 every week, if it was the same every single week, if it never changed there. Okay, one way of thinking about it. We can also take the $70 and say, well, what would she make if, if it's, uh, you know, by event? So the babysitting, you have the dog, and you have the errands, right? Can you break that money up and to make it be a total of 78? Sure. Maybe she babysat and made $40 for four weeks, $20 here, and $18 there. As long as that adds up to 78, you're going to be okay. If you want to do a weekly wave, this is every week, 1950. I'm not quite sure exactly what they're looking for. My answer key, my teacher document, uh, wasn't very clear on that one. So just give it some thought. How much did you make each job? Make two lists of what she could have done. And those are some values to work with. That's it. Have a great day. See you next time.